Kim is going to be really upset with us, I think. Pull on the right boot. It's not completely useless. You're able to reveal a little more of the putrid polymer sock beneath the boot. Pull on the left boot. It feels like the leg is going to come off mm. along with the boot. Yeah. But you're able to get the boot to move a centimeter or two. Just relax. This is easy. This is happening. See? The corpse doesn't care if you try to take his boots. He doesn't need them. He's probably glad to get rid of them. Try to twist the boots off one by one. This is the right method. Okay. It takes some time, but eventually the boots come off. Oh, phew. With nasty <laughs> slices of polymer sock stuck mm -hmm. to even bigger pieces of skin and rotting flesh. Take stock of the damage. Not good. Let's pin this on the bear. The ice bear tore up his legs with its claws. As for the boots, you can't possibly do anything with them until you've cleaned and disinfected them thoroughly. Okay. Yes, these absolutely need to be washed before. The stink is incredible. Didn't the whirling have a kitchen? These boots were probably left on the corpse because they were impossible to pull off while it was hanging. They're not exactly pleasant to look at right now, much less smell. Even less pleasant now that you know the name of the man, pieces of whose flesh are still stuck to the insides of the boots. Will I ever be able to wear them? The size seems about right. Once you get the foul-smelling flesh gunk out. Isn't there a saying about walking in another man's shoes? You've seen too much to be that naive. Even if you don't remember it, you'll never know what it was like to be him. Put the boots away. All right. Um, what's going to happen now? Kim isn't... We're not going to be able to wear them in front of Kim. I don't know. All right, let's go to this kitchen then. I was thinking maybe the washerwoman could clean them. But... Ew, I can't believe we're going to clean it in the kitchen. That's disgusting. Ew. This industrial gas-powered stove has been used to prepare food for many hungry hostel guests. There are several pots and pans on hand. Getting the corpse residue out of these boots is going to require patience and also a huge pot full of boiling water, soap, and white vinegar. Check out the cookware. Check out the cleaning supplies. There is a variety of soaps and bleaches in the cabinet to the left of the stove. There is also a bottle of white vinegar in the cabinet next to the fridge. It's bad with those boots. Don't be stingy now. Soap, that's exactly what I need. Pour lots of dish soap into the pot. The boots are really disgusting. Pour some dish soap and the bottle of white vinegar into the pot. The mm -hmm. delicious smells of cheap soap and vinegar waft up from the pot. All right now, chef. Light up the stove and boil them. Check out the cookware. A commercial pot draws your attention. It's very large, gigantic even. It could be used to make enough stew to feed an entire city and also to boil a putrid pair of death boots. Add water, the boots to the pot, bring it all to a nice boil. The strong smell of vinegar forces you to step away from the pot. The water slowly comes to a boil. Strips of polymer fabric and human tissue separate from the lining of the boots. They float to the bubbling surface. Wait some more. The boots look cleaner and cleaner. Those bits of human flesh are beginning to look cooked you can smell it too just like beef stew a little more that's it chef the boots are as clean as they're going to get steam dense with the smell of strange meat disappears into the vent above the stove dump the sock and flesh stew and examine your new boots a pair of real beauties the boots are shiny hot and reek of vinegar just perfect master chef out to authority. What do our boots do now? One perception. Ooh. How are we gonna get away with wearing these? Oh my god. Hey Kim, good morning. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, um, let's go see if we can get us a date. Actually, let's talk to her first. 
our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. Why what was there, can I help you with? Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. I'm guessing you didn't put it there, Ruby did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that Ruby girl. She speaks slowly, wringing out a rag after a long silence. Her hands move into the water bucket. Some water slushes over the edge. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before, but this seems different. You said she left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs, around eight o'clock, I think. She probably heard the Lieutenant's Kanema drive by, and it woke her up, just like it did you. Is this room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. The truth, sire. What is she like? What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. This Ruby is an old lady whisperer. She knows how to work the village elder. Unlike you. <laughs> Did she talk to you much this time? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cross a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. She wanted to talk to her, as they usually do, but she was brooding. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shack, thinking... You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. I have a possible explanation in my mind. I Do tell. A seagull flies overhead, obviously a bad omen. It's an exit plan. On second thought, I'd rather not say. It's not something I want to think about. That bad, is it? Did she have any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? Not that I knew of, though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. She brushes her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful mm, for that. I was thinking. <laughs> Where did she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Her tone is without malice. Further up coast we go, then. You're right, this place is huge. She's a needle in a haystack. Wipe your brow. Man, I was really hoping she'd be hiding in this village. Are you sure she didn't go somewhere more pleasant and less wet? I was really hoping she'd be hiding in this village. Yes, it's going to be too much work for you to find her. Better for you to stay here, get a nice cozy fire going in the heater. The felled electric mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Mm. Step closer this time. I had a few more questions about Ruby. What more do you want to know about that poor girl? Enough about Ruby. I had other questions. Yes. 
Let's serve us other Goodbye. One officer. She really Oops. means it. It's an honest plea. Sorry. One thing, officer, if you do find her, please go easy on her. She looks around. The air is getting colder. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. All right, let's go have a look at this hitter. It's and getting late. Enter. <laughs> All right. Oh, what? An old mirror hangs on the wall. Oh, you see the reflection okay. of your face in it. Awesome. We can do it here. The expression. Alright, so we can still work on that. Okay. Alright, um, let's go and see if we can chat. What's her name? Lillian? Waves are beginning to Lillian. die down. Look at those little bastards. Fuck. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. We have no Riz. All right, uh, suggestion. Let's write it down. Suggestion for Lillian. Um, is there anything else we need to do or should we go to bed? I don't want to do too much without him. So let's go to bed. The bed is comforting. Ooh. If a bit run down, still, you've earned the rest. Go to sleep. Hopefully we have better dreams because we have a... The bed underneath you is soft, if lumpy. Waves wash the sand underneath the hut, then grow distant to your ear. In the quiet hum of the organic heater, you fall asleep. Like a deftly cast fishing net. Sleep pulls you out of the world and into its dark shore. The rough mesh chafes. Tightening around you, it digs into your brain. Great, this is going to be really chill. Dark shore, my ass. I know what this is. Yeah, yeah, just let me sleep. How have things been going for you out there? Helped anyone lately? Saved anyone lately? Murdered anyone lately? This bastard isn't even listening to you. Because you know you are a murderer. A disco music listening psycho killer who offs poor people. And then forgets about it. I don't care, that doesn't scare me. Okay, so I'm a murderer and that's bad. Shut up, I just want to sleep. Hear that? Iceman wants to sleep. He doesn't care about killing people. That's nothing to him. Black water under the bread. The thing he is really scared of is much, much worse than that. What is it? Why are you doing this? I just want to sleep. I can almost see the dark. We're trying to help you. All these processes, these tortures, voices and tremors are all just distractions, flares and countermeasures to keep you from the last dream. The worst of them all. The last dream? The last dream will be total annihilation. Cinders, peeling off the fuselage. We won't be there to help you anymore, Harry. We will be dormant. You will be naked and alone. And the air will smell of apricots. Her face forms in summertime. I don't want to anymore. I don't want to think either one of those things. Her face forms in summertime. In hell, an ancient sadness, brother. Ten thousand years later, in front of the video rental, there is a warm breath on your face again. 
Everything is okay again. Everything is so okay. Doesn't sound like it will be okay. I can't wait. I can't wait. Doesn't sound like it will be okay. Your eyelids flutter open for a moment. When you close them again, you sense the light of the room around you. You're back. In two seconds, the alarm will ring. The last thought in your head before waking is, maybe you shouldn't have seen that stained glass window in the church. Open your eyes. Mm. Oh, what's that? Ooh. If this is good, I'm not giving it to Spiraling Disaster or whatever his name is. Spiraling Doom. One logic. I think that we've got a suggestion one on right now. Yeah. Um, let's see what it looks like. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, the jacket, the coat, the jacket's fine, but that singlet is not great. Oh my god. Uh, Kim? I'm worried about Kim's reaction to our boots. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see? Can we shave now? Probably not. On the table, you see a bowl of water. Hi, hand-eye coordination. Okay, so we don't need electrochemistry anymore. We need hand-eye coordination. Can we do anything with the bed? Can we make it, the maybe? The bed is comforting. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about how Kim's going to react. Hi, Kim. Good morning. All right, <laughs> um, let's go, go to processing, um, we need to get this yes. body processed, oh my god, aren't we going to talk about the boots I'm wearing, all right. Okay, let's talk about it, you stole the boots. He looks at the gleaming technological footwear you're sporting. Congratulations. That must have taken an enormous concerted effort. Considerable ingenuity and timing. Now, I'm going to report you and you're going to go to jail. Lie. Lie to get out of it. You are? Please don't. I was just... These are not the same boots. I like them so much I went and bought myself a pet. You're joking. You're joking. Am I? Anyway, did you want something related to police work? I don't care about your insane theft. The lieutenant thinks and looks away from the boots. Just know, if anyone asks me, I will snitch on you. Okay, Kim. All right. Go process the body, Kim. Yes. Do something useful. All right, so maybe... We need to go to the body. Can we open this yet? An what do you mean? So we can't this open it? This machine is dead still. It has oh a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. All right, freezer. physical the instrument. So Let's bag him, Kim. Take him away. We didn't include the boots in the report, so no one's going to ask us about the boots. Let's bag him, Kim. Take him away. The lieutenant takes the body away. You work alone for the rest of the... Oh, the whole day? No, thank you. No. All right. So let's keep asking people, I guess. Um, we can ask the kids, maybe. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Kids, have you seen any bad people around? What bad people? One of the twins looks up, his mouth slightly open. I don't think questioning four-year-olds with their parents present is going to crack the case. Shut up, Kim. Then we're definitely doing it. Hi, Lily. Hello, mister. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. She frowns. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. 
<laughs> she slowly processes the word, then snickers with laughter. Do you know anyone named Ruby? No. Luby. Luby. Ruby. Suddenly the girl gets all serious and leans in as if she's about to tell you a secret. My mum tells me I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say Earl. Or like, sometimes I can, but then Earl. Er. Earler. Kids. The lieutenant shakes his head. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye! Thanks, Lily. <laughs> Is that the phasmid? It looks like the phasmid, leaning against the wall. Try to sneak up to the phasmid, lean toward the phasmid and clasp it in your hands. Try to sneak up to the phasmid. It's not the phasmid. It's not even organic. It's a fire iron. How disappointing. I can't believe it. Of course, that wasn't the phasmid. It's way too big. This is what I get for trying to be a scientist instead of a cop. I mean, I'm not even a good cop. Yes, we are. Of course it wasn't the first. I can't. Of course it Don't wasn't. Don't be too hard on yourself. You couldn't have known that for sure. And besides, finding this phasmid is your special destiny. You can feel it. Give the dream of discovering the Insulindian phasmid a rest for now. <laughs> Forever. There's no one else around here to talk to. Um, we can talk to, what's his name? The guy with a, his son. I can't think of anyone else around here. Have you seen a redhead woman around? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. That's good. No neighbours to complain about noise when you get the club going. Considering what we're trying to do here, this doesn't look like a good sign. No noise when you get the club going. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. Party. Alright, bye. What about you freaks? Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Sooner, can you at least help me fight like with this? Or are you gonna keep being a useless bitch? Have you seen anyone suspicious, say a woman named Ruby? What? No, no one's suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Uh, right, so the only people we have person we have left is Grant. Hopefully Trant can help us. Ooh, what about this acrobat? How do we find him? How do we talk to him? Ooh. Could these wise workers contact microphones? I don't know. All right, so I guess he can't help us. Mm -hmm. All right, come on Trant, I'm counting on you. You're my only hope. We could play around with that phone a bit more. It might be funny. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikael here. He pats his son's head. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. There's something friendly and familiar in how he says that. A day off. He's telling the truth. Okay. He hasn't seen anyone. Oh my god, alright, well, we've spoken to everyone in the fishing village. Did we end up asking them about Ruby? I can't remember. Well, they're not there right now. Fucking hell. Oh. What are you doing there? Officer, care to play your game with the lonely old man? The jolliness is gone from Gaston's face. Actually, never mind. Wouldn't be the same. Where's Renee? The prick is gone. I... I can barely believe it. But he's really gone. Gone? Gone where? What do you know? What happened to his medals? Oh, <laughs> do you know what happened to his medals? May Renee rest in peace. Gone? Gone where? Hell, most likely. He was 
An absolute can't. What? How did he die exactly? His hungry little heart finally gave out. The dock workers found him in the guard booth this morning. Wasn't even supposed to be working for another week, but he just had to prove how tough he is. Did he feel like he has to prove he can still pull his weight? Doesn't need handouts? Guess he was about to head home. Cause when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes and not the Kuketu uniform <laughs> I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. Now the joke's on him, cause he's gonna be buried without it. Gaston smiles a sad smile. Do you think our conversation about his job pushed him to out there? No. I think he might have been talking about her, you know? The irony isn't lost on me, but I wanted to ask about something else. Do you think our conversation about his job pushed him to go out, to go there? No. Rene was the most stubborn man in Revachol. Nothing you or I could say would ever push him to do anything. The man was completely immovable. He has doubts, mm. but right now, he just wants to move on and not think about it. Was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute can't. Even his old army buddies didn't want him around. He was like an old viper. The only people who could stand to be around him were Jenny and me. She saw something in him when we were just kids and... Jenny? Uh, and she never lost sight of it. And I thought if the most beautiful being in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. Did you love him? We've hated each other our entire lives. So <laughs> much, in fact, that... He falls silent and looks at you, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I... I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. You know what his last words to me were? He wipes his eyes with a, with a sleeve. Something mean, that he's sorry, some right-wing royalist slogan, something forgettable like see you tomorrow probably. Tell me. In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without trial. That's what he said to me. He lived a cunt, and he died a cunt. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. <laughs> the old man gathers himself and wipes his eyes again. Do you know what happened to his medals? I took them for myself. Took them to remember oh. that old cunt. Nobody knew him better than I did. And I want to remember that old cunt by something. Strange how old cunt sounds almost gentle when he says it now. <laughs> yeah, something to remember. I mean, I know that word, it, it, has, it has a friendly connotation sometimes, you know? Yeah, something to remember your friend by. Give him the photograph of Renee and the girl. Let me see. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young René looks so happy, and Jenny. Eyes blurry with tears, he has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I just... Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. It's to make up for taking your sandwich. That was nice. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. He probably didn't even know René had the photo. I offer my sincere condolences. Old people die, you better get ready to... <laughs> oh my god. I offer, I offer my sincere condolences. Yes, we are both very sorry for your loss. <laughs> it is what it is, part of life really. <laughs> but to know someone for 79 years, then one day, they're just gone. Yeah. I just don't know anymore. 
about anything really. But you, you must need something. Too bad Renee's gone. I was hoping to ask him about Maybell's. I already did hold out the flower. I want to go over more things about Renee if that's okay. I was hoping to ask him about Maybell's. Renee hold out wasn't the flower. really what you'd call a botanist officer. And believe me, he didn't like insulindian lilies. Wait, insulindian, insulindian lilies? Mm, that's their old name, dating back to the time of kings and crests and all that other stuff he loved so much. Why didn't he like them? There were many reasons, but mostly it was the communals. They called them the Bells of Revolution. A sad smile, smile, <laughs> sad smile passes his face. I guess in the end, the Insulindian lilies were just another piece of the old Insulinda. The Royalists had to surrender to the Mazovian insurgents. It doesn't really matter anymore. I want to go over over a few more. I want to go over a few more things about Rene, if that's okay. Yes. What about Rene? Sincere yes. condolences. It is what it is. I just don't know anymore. Bye about for now. All right. So it doesn't look like we can ask anyone here about Ruby. So I think what I'm gonna have to do. I'm going to have to just send Kim away, wait on the bench until night time, and hopefully the drunks come back out because they must be the ones that can tell me about Ruby because I've talked to everyone else. Um, let's get some more health supplies. Ooh. The yellow roses in the window aren't... Uh, those aren't the flowers that were left for last year. Uh -huh. Oh, right. That's how we zoom in. Oh, okay. Let's send Kim to processing. Let's bag him, Kim. Take him away. All right. He takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands. I'll take the legs. Bag the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. All right, so, um, physical instrument. Think deep thoughts, wait one hour. You finally stop picking your nose. Oh, get up. Are they here yet? No. Time passes. What if the sun just one day turned off? The world thrown into an eternal darkness. A grim future indeed. Hmm. We wouldn't survive. All right, keep waiting. The bright sun blazing overhead is making it difficult to concentrate on deep thoughts. Hmm. Overhead. Date of birth generator. You were born in the year 07, in the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, Ooh. where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. That's good. The revolution had about one year left to go, and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. Shit. The bloating okay. might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Okay. Minus difficult one difficulty to all physique passives. All right, are they here yet? No. Perhaps a firmer grasp from the coalition is necessary for maintaining order in Revachol. It's always good to have a moderating force. Still not there. You try to come up with something fresh and exciting, but the endeavor only gives you a slight headache. Fucking hell, where are they? Okay, they should be here by now. What the fuck? Oh, there they are. Oh, finally. Okay. Tequila Sunset. Oh, I've already asked her. 
Shit. Can't no. really remember seeing any women after. He oh really has God. no idea Shit. who this Ruby is. All right, so I just wasted a full day. Who else am I gonna ask? I have no one to ask. Ruby left the village and went up the coast to explore the coast for signs. Oh, okay. Shit, all right. Find a way into the secret passengers. How? All right, let's see if we can ask her on a date. Let's do it. Aye, oh, the sea's mm. gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? She needs to go on a date with another drunk badly. Oh, yes, Fuck. she does. You mm. need to get your drink on. Uh. There is no other way for human beings to procreate. Not after 6,000 years oh of yeast God. cultivation based mating rituals. So we failed and we're still going to go for it. Fuck. Uh, I like you, but I'm afraid to be around you because you're a woman. I want to be close to you and there's but one way to intimacy. Since the dawn of mankind, Al Ghul has watched over the reprocreation repro of our species. Lay with me. Let's celebrate the ghoul. Alcohol makes closeness possible. Let's connect. Oh my god. Um... Do I have? I like you, but I'm afraid to be around you. Okay. Where is this going? She blinks. I need to be drunk. You do too. Let please get drunk with me on a drunk day. Absurdly and pointedly phrased. You can be quite funny, officer. Anyway, what did you want? She doesn't even understand. You asked her out. Perhaps you're too sober to pull it off right now. Try again later. Oh my god, okay. I hope this hasn't ruined. Look, let's pretend that this never happened, okay? I don't want to get drunk. I don't want to drink, you know? I want to get better. Um, I'm lost without Kim. <laughs> Have you seen any women around here lately? I'm a girl. <laughs> Who are you? What's your name? Don't call Abigail. Hey, I'm on an important office official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. The drunk man starts coughing a really disgusting hacking cough. Where am I? What is this place? The man hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Don't, don't, don't call. Slowly his head nods off to the side and he passes out, tongue dangling from his mouth. All right, <laughs> what about you? What about you, Rosie? I'm just gonna call him Daisy. <laughs> the legend, he's back. And firstly, oh I got God. smoke. You have nothing to say. I don't want to do anything without Kim, you know? So, oh my god, what a waste of a day. We've wasted our day. All right, let's... You sit on the wind-worn wood... One hour. All right, let's go to bed. The place feels almost like home now. Quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. You're incredibly tired. The darkness and warmth really? <laughs> come fast. You're falling asleep. We haven't done anything. It's easier this time. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. This respite, you've earned it, brother. Bask in the darkness. Let it swallow you up and swivel you around while you forget everything you've managed to remember. But been bad, I haven't earned this. Is this the last stream? 
I haven't earned this. No, you haven't. You've just been. Thank you, darkness. Thank you. You're welcome, Harry boy. You earned it. Fall into a deep, uninterrupted sleep. After centuries of darkness, the alarm rings. But what's this? Ooh. You actually feel rested. There's no time to cuddle with your pillow, however, or as much as shiver from the cold. The world awaits. Go. Why our eyes shouldn't be red? We're fully rested. We've been good boys. We're not drinking. We're not doing drugs. Hey, Kim. How'd it go? Good morning. Let's look around the coast for signs of Ruby. A door, a building, a hiding place. Could the instigator be inside? Okay, so what do we... Okay, so how do we get in there then? Oh. There's no way the perp is in here, officer. Okay. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. Can I try to get in though? Kim, you think she's in there? Point to the boarded up building. The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in, though many have tried. Can I try to get in though? Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable, but I like the spirit. Have some points. It's lonely and cold without points. And dangerous, dangerous too. Nothing more to do here then. Ooh. There's a slip in the concrete there, here, I saw. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Yeah, I'll ho into the slit. What's in there? Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there. I hope not. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Yell ho into the slip. There's no echo and no answer. Finish thought. Okay. Maybe, um, if I remember correctly, there's like a sewer, like a manhole on the mainland near, kind of near where Sealang is. Would that be a... Maybe we could go through there. I don't know. Because um, we're not finding anything here. Yeah, see this manhole here, where maybe? I don't know how we operate that bridge. Am I just misremembering? Like, I thought I saw like a manhole or something. I'm gonna have to look it up if I can't. I don't know what to do, I'm stuck. I can't speak to Tiago, but surely he wouldn't know where Ruby is. The teens won't help, help. Trent doesn't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try going to the church again, I think. Um, he said something, uh, Harry, our character, said something about the church wall that he wishes he never looked at it. It's probably nothing, but it, it's something, you know. I don't know what else to do. And I really don't wanna have to look it up, you know, I like to figure things out on my own. But if I can't, then I can't. Or well, maybe I fucked it up, I think. I think I screwed it up with the washer lady. I think she, yeah, I don't know. All right, there's nothing new there. She won't tell us anything sooner. It's selfish. She won't help us unless we help her. What a bitch. 
Yeah, Tiago is nowhere. I don't know. I'm going to look it up. She's hiding out in the basement of the derelict Feld building, which is surrounded by a dilapidated boardwalk, amusement park, and fish market. It shouldn't be too difficult to find since it has a large mural painted on the front of the building. Wow. Called out by the game. Well, I'm having... It's difficult for me to find her. I don't know where she is. Okay. Didn't we already look there, though? I remember we... Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Um, let's go back there then, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, five dollars. Shit. Yeah, we already we already looked here, but we couldn't do anything. And designers of Feld Electric. You feel drawn now for some reason dead, to the faded mural again. Rats. Okay. I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. Okay, so I've put some, some shiver clothes on and my perception boots back on. Will this will this help? No. I don't get it. I don't know what to do. Why did that make a ding noise? Why does that make a ding noise? Okay. Plus authority. Okay, that made a ding noise too. Why are things making ding noises? That's not. That's not. That's not. That's not. Okay, um, so by the look by the looks of it, I just had a quick look. There are certain there are things that I need to do before I can pass this shivers check. Um, apparently it's a pretty difficult check to pass. But I can't really do anything else, you know? Um, I'm gonna have to ask Noid to do this because Suna won't help me because I can't open the fridge. Maybe we can go to the fridge now and see if we can open it. See if it's thought out enough. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner. Ice groans and howls under the strain of your giant gloves and multi-tool until the lid cracks open. Finally. Darkness lies inside, but you can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign, left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep, a filament memory with the words off-site copy written on its side. Ape the filament memory. You gently lift the cube from oh, its hell. frosty bedding, careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and kill them Lucan. as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? Mm. There's a radio computer upstairs. Yeah, all right. We are detectives, so we should know what's on this. An excuse to snoop. <laughs> I'm a detective. Glowing nest. Insert the off-site copy. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good morning. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the offsite copy? I might have the password for the offsite copy. Good. Please repeat the password. Say after life death. No, that's oh. not it. Maybe it's the second part of the light motif you saw on the stained glass window. Oh, say after death life began. Good. I've unlocked the offside copy. After ending the call, please press print to okay. access the filament. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. Fortress accident. 
Is there anything else I can do for you today? That's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still Press smoldering. Print. It sounds like something cracks before the piece of paper starts filling Shit. up with pure black ink. Something's broken. Fuck. Machines aren't supposed to behave like this. <sighs> Looking, oh, we already did that. Removing the offset. The copy. filament slides out of its glowing nest. Okay. Read the printout. The paper is soaked with ink. It's monochrome darkness spanning from margin to margin. What it's happened? It's not possible to make out any oh. information. What happened? It's just covered in ink. Odd. Something is obviously broken here. The lieutenant runs his hand over the ink soaked paper, staining his fingertips. Um, examine the printout again. This is a red chair. A single Ooh. speck of white shines out from the shade. For some reason, the printer decided to spare this one tiny dot of paper. Marked by the devil itself. This must be the information Sauna is looking for. Sauna. She knows how to make sense of it. Tear off the printer. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the... It's empty like a beehive. The filaments you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. I'll leave. So I hope it's not broken now. The fil this filament, oh, this filament contains information. All right, so I don't think it's broken. Shit, we can sell them for 50 bucks. All right, awesome. I did not think we'd be able to do that. All right, oh, cause I was really worried because we would have been stuck. Cause I wouldn't have been able to do anything otherwise. All right. Can you soft lock yourself out of this game? I feel like maybe you can. That's scary. That's like the worst thing that could happen while playing a game that you soft lock yourself out. So why can't I fast travel sometimes? Like sometimes I can't fast travel. So why can't I go to the church? I don't understand. I don't get it. Am I too close or something? About the off-site copy you asked me to bring. Yes. Hmm. I bought you the filament to give her the off-site copy. Is this the filament you're looking for? Show her the production schedule. By the way, we put a dead body in that fridge. Oh my god, why would you tell her that? Um, is this the filament you're looking for? No, that's the production schedule you stole and oh. accessed without authorization. I don't need it. Okay. In his defense, it was simply lying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. Okay, I bought you the filament. Thanks. Looks like it's the one. What's gonna happen now? Now, I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. She's already inserted the, inserted the filament into the radio computer's core, ready to close the door. Don't waste your time printing it out. There's nothing but a speck of white in the sea of ink. It's broken. What are you even hoping to find? I have a theory. Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The paper starts filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming blackness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. Like, cool, now what? Something's very wrong with the filament's memory. Step back, please, just stop. Stop playing with this thing. Uh, play cool, now what? Sona doesn't reply. Her hand's running over the printout. She's looking for something. For her morning star. Eyes scouring the millimeters. Here, I found it. She suddenly says, where? Lean closer. It's the white dot. It's in the same place I saw it before when I printed out. Where? Lean closer. Hold on. She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps and the light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. 
Can I do something? I'm still not sure it's a good idea tinkering with the unknown. Say nothing. Just give me a second. I I'm am. Almost. She clocks up her typing speed. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fists into the air. You did it? You found the coordinates? Oh my god, congratulations! So, where is it? Where is your two millimeter hole in the world? Um, oh my god, congratulations. Thank you! She yells back with a grin. So, where is it? There, in the swallow. She points at the other end of the church where a group of water bowls form a ritualistic arch. Think you can help me again? Uh, sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. What an interesting proposition. Truly a task for the intellectuals. Solving the puzzle of water bowls. Right, I'll go figure it out. I'm good at intellectual puzzles. Figure it out? No. I don't need you to figure anything out. I've got a computer for that. She pats her main, the mainframe. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Okay. Move the third bowl two centimeters to the left and the fourth bowl five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. Third bowl two millimeters to the left. What? She only wants you to follow instructions. Nothing intellectually stimulating. In this task, a child could do it. Yes, but you like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. What? You don't trust my intellectual capabilities to solve this problem on my own? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Third bowl. So... It's awfully silent again. As if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls. Each chalk drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Move the third bowl from the left two centimeters away. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. This task is an insult to your mental skills. Move the fourth bowl from the left five centimeters to the right. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. Okay, leave. Yes, what is it? I have moved the bowls. It was mind-numbingly easy. What's next? <laughs> I thought he was going to say it was mind-numbingly boring. <laughs> What's next? Great. Everything should be aligned now. She stops biting into her chapped lip. Miss Know It All is hesitating. <sighs> What's wrong? Okay, let's get this party started. Okay, let's get this party started. Yeah. Let's do it. Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. If we got the location oh. right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? Yeah, why did you have it on mute? Honestly? Honestly, I'm a little scared. She's avoiding your gaze. Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. She stares at the heart of her computer. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the mainframe throwing shadows on her chin. What if... Silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... She grows silent, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. What? You're overthinking this. You're right, we should be cautious. We don't know what we're dealing with here. What? I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Like that evil ink that filled the printout. Erasing coherence and meaning. You're overthinking this. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. She rubs her face. Let's think about this logically. Why would nothing be terrifying if it's, well, nothing? Why assume that something that has no presence, existence or qualities has to be terrifying? 
it's scary but we just have to face it hey i don't think i want to do it anymore it seems too dangerous um why assume that yeah why assume that something that has no presence yeah. because it reminds us of death mm. and we humans tend to think that death is pretty scary it's scary but we just have to face it yeah, I, I don't want to say I don't want to. I don't want to back up. So we'll say it's scary, but we have to face it. Yeah, you're right. Let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back, and then yeah. nothing. Oh, I was going to say I'm preparing for a very unpleasant sound. Nothing happens as Sona Logan and Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. Can you hear anything? She doesn't answer. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Well, damn it. She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphones. She's still avoiding your gaze. Come on, did you hear anything? Well, at least the world seems to still be all right. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happened. Let's move on. She says, disappointed. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. Mm. What do you mean nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. She rests her face on her hands, massaging the forehead. No. My hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this, this is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence? You're sure there's more to it? This can't be it. You should have a listen. Very low. Fuck. Shit. It's white, okay. Put on the headphones. All you hear is your own breathing, heavy and hoarse from all the nights spent drinking. It's the breath of an old man. But there's something else. There has to be something big, something unexpected, something new, yet to be discovered. Ghosts, speak to me. When was the last time this world had anything new to say? Well. Did you hear anything? Suna asks as soon as you take off your head the headphones. Uh, no, nothing. It's just silence. I'm not sure. There seems to be something there, but I couldn't really make it out. Yeah. No, I don't think there's anything there. Her voice is bitter with disappointment. The lieutenant looks down at the floor, as if to say, you're wasting time here. Kim always thinks we're wasting time. Maybe the speed freaks can help you with this. Go talk with Andre. All right, I'll let you work in peace now. So we need perception. All right, let's go speak to Andre. I'm here to talk about the church again. Yes? What's the deal? <clears throat> I'm making progress in the church, but it's slow going. And there's a hitch in Suna's research. What kind of a hitch? She's trying to catch an anomaly using a special microphone setup, but she can't hear the audio coming through her headphones. An audio shortfall, you say? Guess what? We got speakers with massive low end. There's a good chance it can do it. I think we have found a solution. I'm not really so sure it's about the lack of bass, but I'll see what Suna thinks. I think we found a solution. We've got some serious range on this baby. It'll blast her shoes off. Believe me. Okay. That's it for Goodbye, now. Goodbye, officer. All right. So let's go back to Suna. Everything Ooh. disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does it mean? Yes, but can I hear anything? It feels like flying on an aerostatic, or when your ears pop, or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere. Mm. 
a weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Sooner, take off the headphones. What if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? All right, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds to this place. Moments the lieutenant inspecting the damage done to the Arabasquas. No. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yes, but they could really help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course. The speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? They would, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. Sure, if you agree to let them build their drug lab. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Brilliant negotiating there, detective. As always. Thanks. Great, I'll go talk to them then. Sure. Let me know how it goes. Awesome. Thanks. Officer. Right, I'll let you work in peace now. Cool. Let's put our authority shoe boots back on. I'm pretty sure. Yes, to authority. Yes, we need our authority gear when we're speaking to these delinquent teens. I like having high authority, you know, to make up for our lack of physical intimidation strength. The good news, I managed to convince Suna. She's okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition. She needs your speakers for her project. We are grateful, Cotman. You're an augury of a new era of a nodic dance music. The speak freak smiles, happier than he's ever been before. You're going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And what about the side business? Have you made up your mind? You mean the drug lab? Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's illegal, you see. Refuse to set it up. Side business? I don't know what you're talking about, turn a blind eye. No, I refuse. Oh man, really? You're a complete bull buster. A cop. Fine, we can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Andre waves to the other speed freaks. Cool. Yeah, it's all set up, man. Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand. He waves his hands in an unbelievably lame, non-hardcore manner. <laughs> Ecstatic vibrations, totally transcendent. And I've finished setting up the new compressor, too. He looks at the imposing black box in the corner that's churning out the sound. Now, the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, Ooh, detective? What do you propose as the name, Andre? A cell. what would you suggest as the name? Egghead, you must have a lot of ideas. Noid, give me your two cents on the issue. Suna, do you have an opinion on this? Kim, how would you name the club? Oh, Kim, Kim would be like, I don't want to get involved. This is a waste of time. What would you propose as the name, Andre? The name? Everything I managed to come up with sounds just wrong. Andre's overthinking it. Says the girl with the microphone. Yes, you should do it, detective. It would be good for the signs. Oh, okay, Noid. The speed freak with yellow beads around his neck is looking at you. Noid's right. You've helped us so much. It's the right thing to do. Asel, what would you suggest as the name? How about something simple? Like the club? Too modern and too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real and true and beautiful. Like a morning after the rave. Okay, you must have a lot of ideas. Yakukata! Yakukata! The place to be! The place to be! <laughs> Yakukata, the zone of ecological catastrophe. That's too morbid, eh? Yeah. Got anything else? Killing the vibe. Hard car! Hard car to the mega! Oh my god. No, it has to be bigger than hardcore. Yes, it has to be even bigger than hardcore to the mega. It has to be bigger than the scene. Noy, give me your two cents on the issue. The amnesia. Like the, I can't remember the name of the club amnesia. 
Amnesia! Get rid of the. Maybe just amnesia. Because you know you get so fucked up, you can't remember who you are or why you're even here. It's not amnesia, guys. The Oops. name. Everything I managed to come up Shoot. with. Shoot, Andre's over. Yes, Lloyd's right. You've helped us so much. Sooner, do you have it's any right opinion on this? I don't. Good. We have too many opinions anyway. Kim, how would you name the club? I wouldn't. I wouldn't build a club and I wouldn't name it either. <laughs> oh, wow, what a shock. An underground place with no name? Sounds like something the crab man would say. We're not going with anything the crab man would say. Okay. Why not? The crab man has ideas, Acel. Ideas from another level of consciousness. I don't care. I don't like the crab man, mm. and I don't like his ideas. His ideas are spooky. Next, please. Spooky? I think I've come up with a name. You have? Well, what's the name? Disco Elysium. No truce with the furries. Furies? Furry? <laughs> Forever show it. Disco Elysium. Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. But Disco Elysium? Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. How about just Elysium then? The past is the future, but the future is dead. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave, like we want it to be. And short, and memorable. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. A light beam washes over the dance floor, the dance floor, bathing it in violet blue. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. Someone turns up the beat. You should go with the flow. Join in on the experience. Start tapping your foot. Observe his movement. What are you doing, Andre? Start tapping your foot. It feels good. Why aren't we it tapping? Feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his He's being a freak. <laughs> Observe his movement. What are you doing, Andre? I don't care. Cool, let's move on to the questions then. What are you doing, Andre? He's dancing. All right, observe. I'm dancing. Dancing. He performs yet and he performs yet another strange pattern of moves, but it doesn't look very cool or modern. Honestly, it looks kind of lame. Kind of lame. It's extremely lame. <laughs> that soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing. Dancing. We should talk about it. We should talk about your so-called dancing. Yes, my man. He jumps up and down with glee. He moves, his moves punctuated by the stro strobe or soapic flash of the club lights. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? I've been meaning to ask you what's with the hair. You meant, oh, we've done that. Savior, where? No words, just dance. Oh my God. Very low. <laughs> just dance. You yes. close your eyes and dream of the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. For now, such ferocity of motion is beyond you. That's where you felt you don't think when you dance, you just dance. But just imagine the moves you could pull to this futuristic beat. I'm keeping an eye on our health bar. I'm worried that we're gonna try to dance and hurt ourselves and die. <laughs> Um, I've been meaning to ask you, what's with the hair? It's to express my individuality. Is it important for you to be an individual? Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. Goodbye, officer. Bye, Andre, you freak. Have we not leveled up? <laughs> Large speakers are set up behind the young man blasting a familiar song. A hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanchez Lane, tangled in its branches, something bronze flutters in the wind. He stands on stage behind a table, nodding along to the music and waving his hand in the air. In front of him, the audio mixer, one reel spinning. The other reel deck is empty. Cables run hither and thither. 
On one side, you see an auxiliary line in with the number 4.5 written next to it. How do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case! No disgrace! <laughs> Bring it down to party place! The first page of the second chapter! Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. <clears throat> Maybe your body can tell you what Arno Van Eyck's jam is missing to make it harder core. All right, let's go. You Ooh. know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate, in your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every core that animal. Needs more bass, always more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody. A good melody is what makes the song really stick so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Point to your head. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know, I was thinking you would know. Nowhere, I'm not gonna become some sort of anodic pop too. I've got enough cover types already. I don't know, I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. Mm. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of right. dance music. Okay, I'll look into it in an official capacity. It's up to the police to make the beats go harder. All right, I'll see if I can come up with something on my own. A citizen investigation. No, I really don't have time for this. Um, yeah, the police to make the beats go harder. <laughs> the young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it so that Egghead could use it to remix Van Eyck's jam. Okay. Yeah, maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. Yeah, all right. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane, right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches, like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. It feels cold. Rudy Saint Jules Jelsain. I've been there. Oh, I know. I know this. I can tell you where it is. Saint G is the boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags and the industrial harbour. It's got the lanterns and the. I knew that. I could have said that. And the mosaic sidewalk. But it's all blocked with that stupid mm. traffic jam yeah. right now. Anyway. It feels cold. Does it? He looks around, looking for the cold. Shake it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! Um, ooh, hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve the Van Eyck jam. Tape! That's... Yeah! Spin the tape until the space escape! Yeah! I got you this banging mega mix. Give him the great door gunner. Mega mix. What about this one? Give him the smallest church in Saint. What? All right. Um, we'll do the mega mix. Right. He snatches the tape from your hand and attaches it to the empty reel slot. One hand on his headphones. He listens to the audio, then shaking his head, he says, "No, no, no! <laughs> this is gonna make people scared. Keep it positive." <laughs> Keep the love in the house. Wasn't that that thing that, um, uh, Cordy? Wasn't that Cordy's recording, him saying all that shit? What about this one? Give him the smallest church in St. Sands. Righteous! He takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. Hand over ear, he listens, then shakes his head. No! No, can't do! <laughs> this is gonna make people sad! This isn't sad car. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Never mind. Normal. Stable. Normal. Stable. All right. All right. Goodbye. All right. What about? Can we sync our signs now, Lloyd? All right. We'll talk to you sooner. Yes. What is it? 
Um, how's the project going? I see that your neighbors have moved in, but all I hear is exotic dan dance music. What? What did you say? You can barely hear her over the thumping bass of anodic dance music. I fucking hate that. Oh, when it's so loud, you can't even talk to anyone. How's the project going? I can't hear you. The music is too loud. The project, how's it going? Oh, the project. It's not going well. <laughs> She, her face lights up for a second before she gives you an exaggerated handshake. Why? There's that guy. I need him to plug a 3.5 cable into the auxiliary input so that I can route the audio signal through the mixer into the speakers. Why don't you just ask him? He doesn't listen to me. He only ever seems to care about hardcore and Yekukata. A place to be, apparently. I'll speak to him, see what I can do. Thanks. Maybe you can get through his magic rhymes. She does jazz, jazz hands to mock him. Let me know how it goes. All right. Right. Okay. Egghead. A better deal. Yeah. Medium car. Can you please route soon a signal through your speakers? Who's a mega? Yeah! I can route it through auxiliary! What kind of a cable does she use? 3.5 or 4.5? It's 3.5, no doubt about it. It's on the ground. Oh, she uses 3.5? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The auxiliary lining is 4.5 millimeter. These two don't mix. Of course. Oh no, we're going to be in this church forever. Don't worry, I have an adapter awesome. for it right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> he searches for the cable on the ground and picks it up, looking at the jack. Hang on, this is a 4.5. We're all good, people! With a grin, he sticks the plug into the auxiliary lineup. You hear a satisfying click. Whoa, thank God. Adapters noticeably degrade the sound quality. Uh. Great! Someone got through to him. Okay, let's get it all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? And the music? Everybody! Everybody! Don't panic! I'm going to turn off the on off for just a sec for a special scheduled event. The young man shouts as he clicks a switch on the mixer. The on off will be back, but we're doing something else for one moment. <laughs> All right, go tell her that Egghead is ready to rave to her tunes. And then I'll turn off the music. <laughs> All right. All right, goodbye. Yes, what is it? All right, I talked to Egghead. He plugged in the cable. You can now unmute your speakers. Okay, but think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit? Oh, my God. Just in case. Maximum! Shouts Egghead, a great smile still adorning his face, larger than a red dwarf star. Maximum is the only way! I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just this instance? Just this one time? Maximum is not the only way, okay? Pump it to the brick! Pump it to the hard master! There's no other way! Glue style! Glue style? Okay, there literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to maximum. Oh my god. See? He pumped it to the hard master. It's uh, why do you want to turn down the volume? Because I'm afraid that something might happen. It's an unknown phenomenon. We can always turn it back up if there's a need. Can't turn down the hardcore! I think that Egghead, what Egghead is trying to say is that he... Say here is that the volume button is stuck on maximum. Of course it is. Yeah! Enlightenment! Ray of sound! Never mind then. Let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers on a count of five. Everyone ready? She looks around the church. Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. Born ready. Ready. I'm ready if you two are detectives. The lieutenant nods stoically. 
Suddenly, your palms are sweaty. The church seems cold and large, somehow. Uh, hold on for a moment. Okay, ready. Five, four, three, two, one. You disengaged. Oh, she lifts her hand from the keyboard. Complete silence fills the room. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total, continuous silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around. In the silence, you see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and then stops. Plasterwork begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts creeping up your spine. <laughs> it's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. A great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly, it builds until the air around you starts to vibrate. Oh my God. The floorboards, the glass, the streets and the people. Yeah. Nothing will remain. Guys, what's going on? There's alarm in the man's voice as he steps back to scan the surroundings. A slight rattle like crystal clattering in the cardboard. Cupboard fills the air, joining the chorus. It's getting louder. Says Noid, his eyes riveted on the strange circle of water basins. Hosiana, mother of Mega! You hear Egghead yell, then something else, but his voice is growing, growing faint. In his mind, a tidal wave approaching from afar, swallowing entire coastlines on its way. Salvation. Hey, uh, what's that weird rattling sound? It was, it was in me at first. I've never heard anything this hardcore in my life. Uh, what's that rattling sound? The beauty and the beat! The future of dance! Planetary! No, Egg! It's the window! The glass shards around Dolores Day's vacant heart appears to be vibrating from the sound. It almost looks as if she's alive. In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside, cautiously, his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. Mm. The window is going to come down! Yeah. No, the roof! Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, a screech fills the air, a scream of wood and nails, the pillars of the church twist and creak above and around you. Come down to us! Love! It's shaking the building's foundation. Yeah. The floor twists. That's it. I'm muting it. She reaches for the keyboard. Yeah, we should stop soon. I'm mute it. Everybody, don't panic. It's beautiful. Yeah, mute it. Shit! It doesn't stop. Oh my god. Basile, have you? The woman is furiously pressing down on her keyboard, but the sound doesn't stop. Yes, I've turned it off. She yells, holding the contact mic in her hand. Andre, pull the compressor. The place is gonna come down. Yeah. Fuck, I can't shut it up. The signal's passed. It's not in here. It's... In the mixing desk now, building into a positive feedback loop. This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. Egghead, it's in the desk. Egghead, whatever you do, don't stop it. What? It's in the desk. And then it stops. Totally and utterly. As if there never was a sound. Only your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at Egghead. Holding a dangling cable in his hand. A black mm. three-pin connector. Egg. I pulled the plug. It was mm. getting too hardcore. <laughs> you did good, Egg. Most mm. of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell. Programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Four years. Twenty-two people. Millions of reals. All that time. This is what we were up against. Just erased it. Suriswolf isn't gonna believe this. Yeah, but did you record it, though? It was dope. I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. I recorded it. Damn, I, I need to send some letters now. 
She composes herself, wipes the dust off her sweater and rests her hands on the keyboard. Thank you all for doing this. Eggman, you too. And you, officer. I don't know what we've discovered, but I know what it sounds like now. That's the start. Kim, did you hear that? What was that? I've never heard anything like that. You're going to <clears throat> you're going to write Sally's Sally's Slaw? What happens now? Are you going to Kim, did you hear that? It was very hard not to. <laughs> I think you're right. There is something going on here. And you need to be very careful with it. I promise, officer. We will not play it again. What was that? I've never heard anything like that. It was mathematical information from the anomaly presented as a waveform. That's what it was technically. Theoretically... She shakes her head. I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. Her voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting after the exposure. You're going to write Salas Law? Yes, Salis our lead designer. And maybe some of the producers too. And some of the writers. If they're sober enough to open a transmission. They need to hear. That it wasn't her fault. Or theirs. They need to hear about this. Don't worry, I won't send the recording. Although I doubt they have the speakers to produce that frequency anyway. What happens now? Are you going to... Stay here! I'm going to stay here with these lunatics. Send letters, maybe meet Sulisbov. Also devise further measurements. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. I don't care, but thank you anyway. That's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot in truth. For her, at least. Now, I have a theory to come up with. Some kind of preliminary explanation to all this. Or the letter will sound like I've lost my mind. Yes. And we have to get back to stabilizing Martinez. Instead of demolishing it with loud bass noise of unknown origins. What? Pale unknown? What's a... Okay. I don't know what that is. Pale. Now that your project is finished, can you help me contact Coalition Warship Archer? You're asking me to circuit bend onto Coalition radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. You want to know is it possible? Probably. But is it a good idea? I'm not so sure. The main difficulty will be finding an antenna powerful enough to reach those frequencies. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, you can't exactly buy mega longwave antennas off the shelf. She's not joking. Even the RCM has to receive special approval from the Coalition to access that kind of equipment. The radio relay, the radio relay tower at Land's End, could that work? I highly doubt it. That tower is barely able to transmit shortwave signals across the bay. To generate megalo frequencies, we're going to need a much larger antenna. She has an idea though. You can see the tiny signal lights firing inside her brain. I don't see any alternative. We're just going to have to build the antenna ourselves. Why don't we just use your AR1? Wait, we can just build an antenna? That sounds hard. Can't we just get one from someplace else? Now we're talking. What do we have to do? Why can't don't we just use your AR1? Because it's a completely different class of antenna. It would be like using a high-end racing carriage where a long-distance lorry is required. We need metal. A lot of mm. it. The taller the structure, the better. Something that is both prominent and easily accessible. If it's near a power source, even better. Come up with a site for a mega longwave radio antenna. Yes. Close your eyes. Unfold your mental map of Martinez. It's morning. You're standing on the plaza before the whirling in rags. The wind pushes a piece of tear across the cracked tiles. From the north comes the malicious laughter of two children. Turn to face the bay. Your eye follows the tiles west. You see a bench and a few twisted, pitiful trees. Then, just water. From behind you, a low, spectral voice whispers, Nay. Turn to face the apartments. Beyond the unkempt backyard rises a monstrous assemblage of concrete, plaster, and corrugated sheet metal. The voice again, 
more urgent now. Nay, just a moment. That voice isn't human, and it's not saying nay. It's saying nay. Turn to face the roundabout. You turn around. The morning sun is blinding. You bring your hand to your brow, and a great shadow materializes before you. A towering beast, frozen in mid-air. The statue of Philippi the third. The dead king and his horse. It could work. It may work, you think. But why do you feel like there may be a terrible cost? We'll need an adequate power supply and a great quantity of cable. If we connect the cables to some of the stranded lorries, we could theoretically increase the antenna's wavelength exponentially. Whatever ambivalence she had about your project before, she's now fully engaged in solving this technical puzzle. Let her think. It's completely ridiculous, but I believe we could transform the entire roundabout into one solid fractal antenna. A note of awe in her voice. She's shocked and pleased by her own audacity. That's a very big antenna. Yes. Very likely the largest private antenna in Revachol. I have plenty of cables and amplifiers on hand. The power supply, I will secure on my own. All we require now is the radio transceiver itself. Where am I supposed to find a radio transceiver? A radio transceiver? Cool, I've got this. I've seen plenty of those lying around. Where am I supposed to find? I'm thinking maybe Roy? Maybe? I cannot answer that for you, but I don't expect it to be that difficult. There's no shortage of radios around here. If you have real to spare, you might even be able to buy one. Mm. But it doesn't really matter where it comes from, so long as it works. And before you ask, no, you can't have the radio from my kinema. Yeah, what about that lorry, Ruby's lorry? Would that work? I don't know. You know what, Kim? I'll find an even better radio on my own. Can't we just use your ra Rain Prefect? Do radio computers have transceivers in them? I think I saw a radio in that office near the harbour. Um, uh, can we just use your Rain Prefect? Absolutely not. My Rain Prefect Rain. is my livelihood. If something were to go wrong, it would be a disaster. Do radio computers have transceivers in them? Certainly. Though it requires a fair amount of technical finesse to remove them. Frankly, it's not worth the bother. Just find a regular radio. You know what, Kim? I'll find an even better radio on my own. I highly doubt that. When I crank the volume on my Dino Wave, it's like you're in the front row at the National Concert Hall. <laughs> All right, Kim. Challenge accepted. On second thought, this is childish. I'm just going to look for a regular... You know what, Kim? Challenge accepted. There is no need to go out of your way to find a top-shelf radio for this purpose. As long as it's functional, that is what counts. I think I saw a radio in that office near the harbour. That sounds like a perfectly adequate radio. Alright, I guess I need to find one of these transceivers then. In the meantime, I will gather the rest of the materials. Thanks. We will meet back here when you have it. Cool. Alright, Noid. You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. With wonder in his sharp eyes. Between you and me, Ooh. I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. But you, oh, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Mm -hmm. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore <laughs> underground. How come? He spreads his arms, looking around at the spread freak setting up shop. Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes on the church floor, mm -hmm. sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. Mm -hmm. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the bass. Sire, the tent, t'was a security risk, and in here, century, t'was only noble of you. 
These kids got spunk. I admire that. Better here than in the tent. It wasn't safe. I'm genuinely into the hardcore lifestyle. You wouldn't understand. I'm a corrupt cop, Kim. This is a corrupt scheme. I did it for mankind. For all of mankind. Okay. The lieutenant keeps it laconic. I think it would be all, I think it'd be cool to have a nice little hangout, you know? Like a nice little night. It's a good social. Like, lighten up, Kim. God. I don't believe you actually think you did it for all mankind. But whatever keeps you in high spirits is okay by him. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Their bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it, on the coast here, was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude, the sea, Perhaps something more fundamental. He means something paranormal. He must... I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. Something more fundamental? You mean the sound anonymy? 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 Right. People are always afraid of all sorts of shit. They're right to be. The world is a trap. What style is this church built in? A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then, this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. Okay, and what is DeLorean architecture like? Yeah, enough, yeah, what's it like? Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff, early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white, a false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures, arches, spires, put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Mm. Marriage shit. Virtue and tyranny. Marriage is shit, yeah. Hey, marriage is great. Marriage is sacred. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside mm. before the sea wind took all the paint off. Year after year, flake after flake, whitewashed clean then covered in green moss. Slowly, peeled by the wind, your skin crawls from the sensation as you look around. What did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Mm. Sigma functions are left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of a nodic beats and hard base is needed to reanimate it. First, where is that quote from? What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the innocent, in Innocentic system. What you're saying is religion has stopped like it being hardcore. What exactly are you saying? What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the innocentic system. A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self appointed intellectuals. It's false core. The way he says it, the force in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. But you guys said the eclec ecclesiastes were all about love and hardcore before, remember? When I did right, no, 
then I did right not to agree with all that talk about the ecclesiastes being okay with this then. And you propose dance music will supplant, supplant this system? But you guys said... I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. He points to his friends. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. Then I did right not to agree with all that talk. The founding party don't give two shits about this place. Look around. They do not have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. And you propose dance music will supplant this system? An odic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. How do you like the glasswork? I don't. Fuck her giving me the evil eye. <laughs> That's her innocence, Dolores Day. Mind your words. I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. You wanted to get inside the church and now you don't like the stained glass window. I'm getting some real negative vibrations. No wonder. We have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with a giant mass murderer looking at ya. Not a good look for the club. I mean, it could be, you know, like a little... Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. <laughs> But she's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here. But she's pretty. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? I do feel there is something terrifying about her. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? Would you say she was, you know, human? Yeah, I'm done talking about her. Um, I do feel there was something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. Say nothing, stare grimly into the distance. Keep it, keep the beautiful sharp shards, keep her long face and her hair. Take her down, crash it, destroy that window, say nothing. The speed freak looks the same way. It is dark there in the back of the church. For a moment, the music echoes strangely. But she's the innocence of humanism. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. And many, many more tons of sugar. She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we live in, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But, yo, I'm only annoyed. What do I know? Yeah, but like, but she's pretty. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers. You set the standard, all right. <laughs> then you meet it. It's effective like that, but it is also very soft of core. That so-called beauty of hers. You're right. I like it hard, hard at core. Then it seems I like it soft because it's anything but soft core. It's terrifying. You may be onto something, Copper Man. She's got those mass murdering hips. <laughs> yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? No one says Arno Van Eyck <laughs> is a mass murderer. The anodic pioneer Reetfeld is not a mass murderer. He is not accused of mass murder. Likewise, no one says Jermaine Egghead or Andre are mass murderers. You can live entirely outside that suspicion. Billions of people go about not being guilty of mass murder. Just not her. <laughs> Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? The world spirit does not have a body. It has organs. Hardcore is an organ of the world spirit. He raises his hand, his left hand. This Arno Van Eyck track is an organ. The carpentry and glass cutting that built this ass are also organs. She's a thief, if you ask me. An organ thief. 
All innocences are. Innocences. <clears throat> Would you say she was, you know, human? <laughs> I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She human. lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. Yeah, they hate this too. I don't know what you're talking about. I have thousands of fans. I'm surrounded by love and support all the time. Hmm, she was a player. She played us all. It's just a game to her. Yeah, they hate this too. Well, they loved her. They put all their love in her and forgot all about the rest of us. The young man lets go of the suspenders and they hit his chest with a slap. Yeah, I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. What a strange choice of words. Caustic. Overflowing with negativity. That can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? Nothing. Everything's okay. I don't know. It's a nice window. I don't know. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't come back to this anymore. Stop talking about it, please. Uh, how are you settling in? Odd to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. Gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. I did get to talk to the crab man, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. You mean all this mother's love stuff isn't too spooky for you? You mean all this sobriety stuff isn't too restrictive for you? What do you mean? Uh, all this sobriety stuff isn't too restrictive for you? Talking to him? I realise that sobriety can be pretty hardcore too. I gotta respect him. The man picks up on stuff. And he knows a lot about the church. I got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you didn't squash him. I want to talk some more about this place. What did Tiago tell you about the church? The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubies built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. Do you mean there were dead bodies here? What's it for? Encasement, confinement, of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. I don't get it. Contain what exactly? Huh, spooky. Let's talk about something. Uh, uh, contain what exactly? I don't know. And it's not something they properly understood either. What it does. But it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. He nods toward the woman. I like to know everything I can because I feel like it, it helps us with future dialogue, you know, the more knowledge we have on certain things. Uh, I want to, as I want my character, as my character, I want to retain everything that I can to help with the dialogue. So, it yeah. It will be fruitless though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. The wood creaks as a gale blows by. Outside, dust particles fall through the darkness, settling down on the age-bleached floorboards. The structure does not feel particularly durable. This building seems less than structurally sound. What makes you think soon is gonna fail? Yeah, less than structurally sound. No. It's pretty fucking unsound, if you ask me. They should have built a club for a Nodic music around it instead. He grins. A Nodic music will definitely contain whatever we're dealing with. His words echo in the chamber. And if it can't, well... 
Uh, what makes you think Suna's gonna fail? Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like substance. I found a doomed commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing the Ubus were trying to contain. Like a concentric ring spreading out. The struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. Do you think there's any merit to the theory? Now that I think of it, it doesn't sound plausible. Do you think there's any merit to the theory? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited psi person. Well, if it's without substance, I guess, there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Why are you so suspicious about everything? Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid anyway? It's short for paranoid. Oh. <laughs> May I ask why? What good is being super suspicious? What are you suspicious of? Got it. Um, yeah, what good is being suspicious? A reasonable question. Say I get hurt. I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyse the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. What are you suspicious of? Ah, uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and colour. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. This is a good, dangerous line of questioning. You should prod him on. What are the most suspicious things? I don't have a top ten list of things I'm most suspicious of, but if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment, the pig wheat paradigm. Something is off there. You feel like it should be the other way around. <laughs> Does this mean you are mentally ill? Don't you mean the left-right paradigm and the pig wheat complex? Tell me more about the left-right business. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? Well, that was certainly stimulating. Um, don't you mean the left-right paradigm and the pig wheat complex? No. Politics is an inert complex of daily corruption and inane think pieces. The real paradigm is economic and it concerns pig and wheat. This is where the innovation happens. It's only a theory. I suspect they're breeding a pig wheat hybrid. Probably in Grad. Does this mean you are mentally ill? Mental illness is a term that powers you to homogenize people. I think I don't reach mental illness. I am merely politically ill. A suspicious element. Tell me more about the left-right business. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong question. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray. Far from our true lives, but we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. What's bad about cereal grain? Having enough food could be a precursor for greater things. What, what's bad about animals? Animals are cute. Yeah, it's only our shit and that we've, and yeah, it's only, yeah, it's our only shit and we're fucking, we fucking suck at it. Oh my God. Um, what's bad about cereal grain? Yes, having food is means to an end, but the left never talks about the end, only the means. Caps are likewise suckers, constantly sleepless in worry. Well, that was certainly stimulating. I want to ask you about something else now. His eyes flicker. 
You mentioned true life. What would that be like? The life is true if it's free from fear, an eternal division among oneself. In others, mankind, their seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come, a return to trueness. It will be hardcore. How would you go about returning to this true life? Beats and bright lights to shatter falsehoods. Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on worriedly. The young man is dead serious about this. Rejection of the right-left axis. Emphasis on unity. Appreciation of some primordial mode of being. What does that remind you of? Sort of like fascism then? Nationalism, militarism, racism, an emphasis on a leader character are totally absent in hardcore. The words echo through the church majestically. Fair enough, just making an observation. I didn't mean it as a bad thing. But shouldn't the ones that are more hardcore rule over the ones that are less hardcore, offer them guidance? Fair enough, just making an observation. He picks up a wrench and scratches his head with it, unaroused by fascism. So you're advocating a noise-based society. You keep mentioning hardcore, what does it mean to you? So you're advocating a noise-based society? Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their art. Thus, they are closer to true, hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them, and they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. You keep mentioning hardcore, what does that mean to you? Utmost dedication, thoughts from the spinal cord. It's a potent superlative as well. The term also signifies certain varieties of pornography that depict penetration, just so you know. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore. He just really likes saying hardcore. Hardcore! His friend shouts from behind his mixed table with a smile surpassing your own in wildness, a total moon face and eyes full of naive wonderment. The term hardcore also denotes a strain of pornography that depicts penetration. Did you know that? That was vague, dedication, something else, superlative. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, did you know that? That's a pretty hardcore coincidence, don't you think? Yeah! So you advocate, yeah, let's change the subject. Oh yeah, sure thing. What's with the clothes? They're hardcore. You look like a woman with those earrings. <laughs> You look like a woman. <laughs> I think, I think, man, woman, and child are arbitrary divisions which serve to bind humanity to serve them. That's it? They're just clothes. Are they? They look outlandish. Not like we can talk. <laughs> I thought they would be, I thought there would be more to it. It's just a style, you know, normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. Caught the key. Oh yeah. Uh, internalize the hardcore aesthetic. Don't just nod along. Really feel it. All right, let's go. Dedicated, yes. hyperactive, unified. You will have to add something of your own to understand this list of loosely formed qualities called hardcore. You need your own entry. Make it. This is for your posse. They got to keep it up. They got to move. You are the major mic enforcer. Jumping around, as this sort of music requires, is actually a taxing physical activity and should be dignified with a sports suit. Long live the world that, that gave shape to hardcore to complete itself. A true heir to DeLorean values. Three and a half centuries and the gift still keeps on giving. I am the law. I'm thinking of wearing sports apparel as my hardcore get up to maximize the mobility of limbs. <laughs> That's like, that is literally like my aesthetic. Just athlete <laughs> Just athlete pants and a hoodie. 
I don't seem to have anything to add to the court. Um, I don't want to say the first one. Uh, I am the law. Start the war. Hit the floor. We need more. Army of hardcore. Yeah. I wanted to talk. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Uh, take care, Noid. All right. Um, let's talk to herself first, and then we'll have a look at our what's She's going on. A melody. Her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. Interesting. The sounds travelling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. Hmm. And no, it's got nothing to do with Contact Mike. <laughs> I wasn't going to. But Contact Mike is... <laughs> I wasn't going to. No, no. I actually <laughs> wanted to thank you for getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much. And the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Now, can you tell me about your associates? Sure. Yes. You helped us out. I can repay the favour. What do you want to know? Tell me about Suna. Oh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. I feel like she's gotten a lot better ever since we helped her. She seems to kind of a chip had uh, she seems to have kind of chilled out a little bit, not be so aggressive. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins, and she seemed oddly happy, like she had some idea with those little creatures, some artistic idea. I didn't really listen, I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Tago? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. Unsettling. I just tried to stay away from the crab man, but he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Oh, he talks to Noid? What for? What does he do? Yeah, what for? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? Thanks. Uh, about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Andre. Andre? He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but... <laughs> yeah, especially with those guys. dance moves. <laughs> he takes care of shit. Sorry. I mean, he's got a vision. Of what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organiser. What has he organised? Nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organise around here either. So then how do you know who's an organiser? He really wants this church thing to work. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. Andre's not super intelligent. <laughs> I've never seen him so psyched about anything though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate, like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know. On life? On his mother's love. Relax, girl. We're police officers, but we're corrupt, rotten to the marrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit. I don't give a fuck on life. Uh, yes. Anyway. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Ooh, I didn't know that. And he keeps you outside in the fucking cold? What a shit boyfriend. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Noid. He's a four burger, I guess, like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg, I don't know about him, but Noid and the rest are from Fulberg, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palisium. He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean do? Like for a living? Yes, no, I mean for, meant for breakfast. Of course for a living. 
No, I meant for breakfast, of course, for a living. He's a carpenter, <laughs> trained and all. He's very good, he just doesn't have the mindset to work like that in a shop somewhere. That's because Noid is violently hardcore. I have internalized it. I understand why he doesn't stoop to servitude. Do you? Wow, you really have talked to him. Indeed, Noid serves no master but the beat. And you? Sir, I abide by the law. <laughs> she gives you a switchblade smile. A strange feeling. Every now and then, something feels off about the way she speaks. She doesn't change tone. But you feel as though there's more about her than she lets on. What is this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor Fulberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie Street up to Jamrock. Or as much as possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? Boogie? It's a little bewildering. Let's say I haven't been down Boogie Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Have I not told you I'm on a raging alcohol? I'm an outraging alcoholic who recently drank himself into an oblivion so deep he can't even remember what sounds like the biggest city in the street in the city. Uh, let's say I haven't been. Okay, then you should go and take a look. I guess Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might just do that if I make it there alive. It's unlikely I'll make it there. Chest pains. Need to continue drinking, but thank you. I might just do that. Yeah. I hope you do. Actually, tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? What's the deal with Egghead? What do you mean? What does he think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. He's the party boy. He told me as much, but what exactly is a party boy? A Nordic music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offence if you like rock music though. Rock music's called by me. Pachu, pachu, swish. Your credentials as the resident future man of Reversham are being questioned. Show her your hip with the times, Gramps. Goddamn right. Rock music is the coolest. Rock music forever. No offense taken. Go on. You don't have to tell me rock is backward. I am the future man. I abandoned rock in the 30s. Stupid rock. Pew. Goddamn rock is goddamn right. Yes, forever. <laughs> anyway. Even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance, like sneezing makes you sneeze, or yawning makes you... Uh... Anyway. He looks around, a little embarrassed of the enthusiasm of his interjection. <laughs> hmm, where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from, or who he is really. One time we were out partying somewhere in Backwater Forberg. Or maybe even Coal City, I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. The worst of the Bandlers. A wretched heap of closed down mines, even west of Jamrock on the dusty slope of Montmartre, the remotest possible area of Revachon. No one even wants to exploit those people anymore. Egg was yelling along to some jam someone was spinning, all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines... There were mines? Yeah, it was in Coal City. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Cold City, because it took us two days to walk back to the fort. He just wheezed the whole way. We never really asked why he came with us, or who he was. I think his name is Jermaine. People are sweet. You can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there. Tell me more about the others. Do you want to know about? Actually, do you tell me about yourself. Me? Again? Yes, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. There's that phrase again. It really reminds you of something. What does that mean? It means I don't answer questions about myself. 
but I'm a police officer, you have to answer me. There's more to you than you let on. What am I not seeing? All right. She picks up the tape recorder and looks you in the eye. There is. Okay. You have to answer me. I feel like saying that is not great. I'm just going to say fair enough. Thank you. Oh my god. Let's try this again. Me? Again? I told you. I must. There's that phrase again. Really rem It means I don't answer questions about myself. All right. There is. Is there a law that would stop me from lying, though? That would depend on the circumstances. The lieutenant taps his foot. That's it? Okay, fair thank enough. Thank you. Alright, thank you. Some other questions. Sure. Oh, shit. Catch the silver bird. Uh, reaction speed for Cell. That's it for now. Alright, let's have a look at what we have here we've leveled up once we've nearly leveled up again all right find a working transceiver and return to the church make van ike's jam harder core find a tape all right so what do we want to do i feel like i i felt this for oh hardcore aesthetic oh shit i was gonna say I feel like this might be important but I don't want to do this we just we just unlocked this so maybe we'll do one of these uh, let's see what we need suggestion oh we haven't done suggestion in a while suggestion is important we need that to go on our date um, that might actually be good. Uh, let's do suggestion. Let's do suggestion. 